Euro setting. And so, but again, excuse me for being slightly Eurocentric here, but, it, but it's important in a way to see this because the way that Europe will work, for example, on its discussions in Rio, the way that Europe negotiates its use and access to those enormous amounts of materials and resources is in a sense contained within the Europe 2020 strategy. And our challenge is to try to make that little set of words, smart, sustainable, inclusive, have ecosystems and ecosystem services. <coughs> so the flagships, unfortunately, don't carry the word ecosystems. Uh, we have things like resource efficiency, um, the intelligent society, we have all those sort of big words, but we don't find, unfortunately, the words ecosystems anywhere in there. We see a glimmer around the phrase natural capital, that's sort of floating around in some of the texts, but it is not clear even today that we've managed to, in a sense, penetrate into the basic um, linguistic uh, sort of mix that people have when they're thinking about policies. So we still have quite some work to do. Now, one of the ways that we will do that is through resource efficiency. And again, if you can see here from the OECD figures that we have put tremendous pressure on certain ecosystems, uh, particularly freshwater ones, but land as well. So if you just look at the way in which affluence and technology and population are going, you see that in the end it's all going to become very, very difficult. And we will have to start to think very seriously across the economy how we can couple our use of resources. But another thing is that we do have some policies for which we need to step back. And we have made mistakes, and I think most of you in the room would recognize that the biofuel discussion was probably one of those, and most politicians are very sensitive about that. But recognizing the mistakes is only the first part of it. We then need to come up with solutions about how we will manage the ecosystem resources that we have inside Europe, but also be much more responsible about the impacts that we have elsewhere. Not just the footprint of the but genuinely participating in research and other programs around the world to understand what's needed. It starts for me when we think about preventing hazardous and toxic waste coming from inside Europe and ending up elsewhere, none more so than in a place like Greenland, which you would think is a lovely, pristine place. This is some of the homegrown rubbish. Um, but nevertheless, if you go out into the wilds of Greenland, thousands of kilometers away from anyone and anywhere, and then go and consume some of the marine species in the ecosystem, you will unfortunately be exposing yourselves to uh, tissues that have in the order of 10 to 20 times the contamination and the um, pollutant loads that we see inside Europe. So through aerial transport, through marine transport, and through concentration within the ecosystem and the food chains, we have really got a problem in the sense of female blood uh, concentrations of all the heavy metals, including and also DDT and other, other nasties. So preventing hazardous waste at source means that we have to have a green economy in Europe. We cannot start down this road of greening ourselves, so to speak, without taking into effect where most of our uh, waste ends up. We also then have a historical problem. Who is responsible then for cleaning up some of the, those pollutants that we can actually resource back to um, sources inside Europe? So there's, a, there's an issue there, there's a legacy issue that we need to take into account. We also need to be very, very concentrated around the conversations to do with resource rents or royalties or land taxes. And there's a very live debate in Europe about land taxes at the moment, taxing the wealthy, so to speak. But again, um, it depends what you do with the land. If you take care of it and you're using it for carbon sequestration, you're reinvesting in the soils and so on and so forth, then you know, do you get a tax break for that? And these are conversations that we're now having with countries individually as they look to change the tax base or the revenues that they have to meet their public debt, realizing that employment is plummeting and therefore revenues and returns on employment are going down, they're looking to resources to provide the tax base. So moving, shifting the burden from labor to resources sounds great in practice, but in the end, you can have some very perverse ways so that the very thing that you want to do, which is to look after high nature value and so on, ends up not happening simply because of the upfront cost. So it's really tricky. The fiscal reform at this level is extremely difficult, but the pressure is on to do that. So, one way or another, we are talking about subsidies. And to some person, a harmful subsidy, uh, the subsidy is harmful, and to others, it's not. 
So finding the right conversations about how we will look after and manage ecosystems and ecosystem services is not a trivial issue. And now there is much at stake because many, many governments see this as their future tax base. Um, innovation, trying for people to understand how new technology like nanotechnology, GM and elsewhere, what they really do mean in terms of ecosystem services, this is really quite tricky. So for example, when we think about all the wonderful gadgets that we have, um, few of us can actually know where they end up. And this is where a lot of European electronic goods end up, on the back streets in Delhi, being smashed apart by people with uh, sledgehammers, all those beautiful Nokia phones, see the small pieces there. Then they get burnt, and you can see this is done within a sort of domestic setting. So I can tell you it takes about five minutes before you have the most horrendous headache of breathing in all these this really, really hazardous chemicals. And ultimately, it all gets cleaned into the rivers. So here is our electronic waste from Europe, essentially polluting some of the major rivers in the developing world. So we are not naive and we are not innocent. I think that's really the point. Even though we have strong legislation, um, we really haven't managed to capture the illegal shipments of waste. And then we think about new ways of living. Um, moving out into the oceans, we're thinking about a team for oceans. Uh, and this is a genuine attempt to try from some of the French to think about alternative ways of moving offshore, so to speak, and actually living in a very different way. So not to be abandoned just yet, uh, I think it's probably quite a really interesting idea. And then how do we sort of feed ourselves locally? So I come back to that idea of how much waste there is and how much damage it does to ecosystems and the water and, and the soils and so on. And what would it look like if Europe really tried very hard to minimize waste within the food chain? And not only just to feed ourselves locally, but to feed ourselves in a way which is ecologically sensitive and retains the resilience within ecosystems. And there's a, one lovely example of a, what I call a low-tech solution, it's called a wonder bag. Uh, it is actually a registered CDM project for the uh, Climate Change Convention. And what it does is it enables women, particularly in developing countries, but also now in Europe, to cut their fuel costs by up to 50%, simply because you heat the food and then you put the saucepan inside the bag, which is heavily insulated, and then you go away and do other things. So you don't have so much food wastage, you save on fuel about half a ton of carbon per week for every household, uh, per year for every household that uses it. But what's very interesting is that it's now enabling people to cook things which take longer, so a much more biodiverse diet is beginning to emerge and people who are using this very, very simple piece of technology. So there are many ways in which we can think about changing our access to resources, our use of natural resources, and our dependence upon them. So 70,000 species are edible, plant species are edible in the world. We routinely eat 70, and we have five commodity crops. So clearly, we can do something about that. And we don't necessarily have to drive ourselves into a discussion about can we feed 9 billion people when all we're having a conversation about is five commodity crops. There are many, many other things that can be done. So around the world, in Peru, as well, we're seeing that uh, there's a flourishing change in the way that local biodiversity has been brought into cuisine, which had long since sort of fallen away. So it's about being imaginative. It's about working with ecosystems in a very different way. They're not the preserve of just the environmentalists. They are actually for all of us to use, to think about things in completely different ways and not necessarily to put them in aspect, as you say, to preserve them untouched. Now, how does my agency, how does the agency in Copenhagen sort of seek to help this discussion? Well, I mean, you know, it would be great, but we're not an NGO. So what we have to do is help governments do the right thing. And one of the things that we've said is that we would try to bring online um, proper accounting. So this is a whole discussion that's gone on for, I think, nearly 25 years, how to do ecosystem accounts, alongside of the system of national accounts. And even as we speak, another discussion in New York is happening. And to very, very simply describe the outcome, we have what's called the Volume 1, which is the system of environmental accounts, which sit alongside um, uh, the, the system of national accounts in a very simple way. And then there's the ecosystem accounts, Volume 2, much more interesting as far as I can see. And volume two is where T will really find, I think, a lot of the answers that we're looking for in terms of the, the biophysical descriptions of what's happening. Um, and the idea is that we, first of all, within Europe, have a very strong idea of what our baseline is. 
Um, we, we haven't gone back to pre-industrial time, absolutely not. But we are seeing that 